Are you an adventurous eater and would love to try some African-inspired dishes, but you have members of your party who are sort of finicky? Well, today on Walt Disney World Adults Only, we'll explore why Boma might be the perfect place for you to eat. Welcome your Royal Highnesses. I'm Carol and today we'll be exploring the culinary genius of Boma at Animal Kingdom Lodge. Boma can be found on the lower level at Animal Kingdom Lodge and is a destination in itself. If you get there early for your reservation, you can explore the lobby or go down to the viewing area where you can see animals on the savanna. The word Boma means a community enclosure used to protect and shelter, and it's often covered with a thatched roof. The restaurant uses that theme to perfection. The stairway leading down to Boma, as well as the main walkway, the railings are supported by sticks and branches, and even some of the food stations are covered with thatched roofs. The ceiling is covered with colorful tapestries and the lighting is subdued. While the center of the restaurant has seating for large parties, along the periphery are many two-top tables nestled in little nooks and you'll find some side water features as well, making the periphery sort of romantic. Couple the ambiance with a glass of wine from their extensive wine list and this might make the perfect setting for your adult-only dinner. Boma serves only breakfast and dinner. Breakfast is $29 and dinner is $49. When the dining plan is available, it counts as one credit. It also has a table of Wonderland discount and at this time an annual pass discount as well. The breakfast offerings are many. The usual fare of oatmeal, waffles, cereal, omelets is what you'll find at many of the buffets. Outstanding items include oak grilled asparagus and tomatoes, turkey barbordi. The dinner buffet is even more extensive and offers a rotating schedule of salads, soups, as well as main entrees. They also have rotating desserts, which include African apple cake, malva pudding, Kenya coffee tarts, zebra domes, coconut mango chocolate tart, assorted cookies and brownies, and bread pudding. Now that we've seen what's on the menu, let's hear what our commentators have to say about the taste and quality of the food. Dan, I know this is one of your favorites. Why do you keep it high on your list? Thanks, Carol. I discovered this restaurant back in 2015, and I have dined here on every single trip ever since. I cannot even begin to tell you just how wonderful I find this restaurant to be. I have dined here three times for breakfast and three times for dinner, and I have absolutely no plans to abandon this restaurant on any future trip. As you say, it's high on my list, and it's high on my list for a reason, and that reason is the food is incredible. Now on paper, with the unique, exotic and speciality offerings here, this restaurant should not be for me. As some of you may know, I'm a bit of a picky eater or a pain in the butt. But this restaurant really does have literally something for everybody, even a pain in the butt like myself. My first experience here was for dinner and the hook that caught me and has been bringing me back for years was the soups and the stews. They rotate them on different days and my favourites are the butternut squash soup, which I actually have the Boma recipe for and make here in London, the Ghanaian oxtail stew, the curry coconut chicken soup, the chicken corn chowder, and the carrot and ginger. 
Oh my, these are worth the $49 alone. I cannot even begin to tell you how flavorful and tasty these soups and stews are. And I typically will have a small amount of about three or four. Then they have a very authentic salad bar as well. Now I'm not the greatest salad lover, but they have so many unique salad options that I just have to get involved. I really like the avocado, grapefruit and papaya salad here, and also the Shamula chilled shrimp. Of the meats, my favorite is the whole Durban style roasted chicken. The spices and flavors on this are insane, and the whole roasted salmon is also really delicious. I will say that I'm not a fan of the roasted sirloin. It was way too fatty for me, but everybody else seemed to really love it. There is usually very little space left for dessert after this buffet, but I always have to try a zebra dome, a bit of Malva pudding, and some of that spiced apple cake. Honestly, it is so good. I have never left this restaurant hungry, and I've always left completely satisfied with both the food and the service. Boma overall is just incredible, and I've never ever had a bad experience here. Eric, it's been a while since you went to Boma. Is that because you didn't really care for it? Actually, Dan, it was quite the opposite. We had a really great meal at Boma. I've only eaten there once. It was back in 2015, so it has been quite a while since we've dined there. We were staying at the Animal Kingdom Lodge and we got a reservation for dinner one evening. It was delicious. Now, I would not consider myself a very picky eater. However, there are a lot of things that were on the buffet at Boma that I probably would not have ordered off of a menu if I saw it listed. Um, especially with some of the descriptions. Um, like I said, I'm not a picky eater, but I'm not too adventurous as well. I know what I like and I know what I enjoy eating, but that's why I really liked Boma. Because it's a buffet, you get to go through and try things that you may have never thought you'd try before. And you can get just a little taste of something and take it back to your table, try a bit. And if it's something that you like, you can go back and get more of it. That's one of my favorite parts about the buffet. Boma doesn't have a lot of the traditional buffet foods that you would find around Disney. Many of the buffets have a lot of the same types of foods, but Boma has a lot of things that are true African inspired or African authentic dishes. Some of the things that I remember from our dinner that really stood out to me were the expansive salad bar, of course. They also had a couple of specific menu items that I never thought I would like, but I really enjoyed. Specifically, one was called lamb bobo tea or bobo thai, and it was almost like a casserole dish. I honestly don't know what all was in it, but it was really good. I actually got a second uh, helping of that when I went back up for another plate. They also had a meat carving station. They had some pork ribs and there's a chef behind the counter that will uh, freshly slice off some of the meat for you. And they had uh, Durban spiced chicken and they have um, a couple of barbecue type sauces, a mustard and a barbecue sauce on the bar as well for you um, that if you wanted to add some flavor to your meat, they have that for you as well. Of course, there's a dessert bar and Boma is pretty well known for their zebra dome dessert. The Zebra Dome, it's a little hard to describe. It's kind of like a chocolate mousse, white chocolate gel. There's a little bit of liqueur in there. It's very, very good, not too sweet. The liqueur cuts the sweetness a little bit. It's really good dessert, really tasty. And of course, at the buffet, you can get as many as you'd like. I would love to eat at Boma again. It's just that we don't really travel out to that side of Disney property unless we're going to the Animal Kingdom Park. Maybe on a future trip, if we were going to Animal Kingdom, we could schedule a day in to go and visit Animal Kingdom Lodge to eat at Boma again. I really would like to try it for breakfast because the only experience I've had for dinner, it was a good experience, but I would love to try uh, the breakfast out and see if it was just as good as the dinner. Courtney, I don't believe you've ever eaten here. Is it on your list to try? Yes, Eric, it is definitely on my list to try. In fact, I made mention of wanting to eat at this restaurant in our video about Animal Kingdom Lodge. I will tell you in one word why I have not had an opportunity to eat here yet. Todd. 
Todd, my husband, is not a very adventurous eater. There are a couple menu items that I am absolutely dying to try. The first one being the Tunisian couscous and shrimp salad. Another item that sounds absolutely amazing is gonna be the African Spice Beef Strip Loin. Although I am not a fan of buffets in general, as I have mentioned before, I do wanna try Boma at least once. The price of $49 per adult is a pretty decent price for a buffet restaurant. Well, Carol, I would love to try Boma sometime. I'll make it there one day. Now, I know that you've had Boma for dinner, but have you tried the breakfast as well? Thanks, Courtney. Yes, I've eaten both breakfast and dinner. They're both fabulous. Honestly, the hardest part of making this video was trying to be objective about it at the beginning. But now it's time for my opinion, so I'm going all out. For breakfast, the star of the meal for me was that French toast bread pudding. It in itself is very flavorful, very delicious, but there is a pan of warm praline sauce next to the bread pudding, and you can spoon that on, and it just takes it to a new level of excellence. I highly recommend that. I'm hoping the cinnamon raisin bread pudding will have the praline sauce as well and it will keep to tradition. Now, if you add a jungle juice mimosa to the breakfast, you are set for a fabulous day at Disney World. For dinner, I could be satisfied just eating the soups and salads. Okay, add a few zebra domes in, I'm not gonna lie. My favorites were the coconut curry chicken soup Butternut squash is always a favorite of mine, and they do it very well. It's rich and creamy, warm and flavorful. Salads, the apple and jicama salad was very refreshing. It was crisp. You got that nice crunch as you bit into it. Definitely a go-to favorite of mine. Now, my absolute favorite salad is the Ghana tomato salad. This is a combination of tomato, watermelon, feta and red onions. Now you think that's a really, really weird combination. The sweet of the watermelon, the tart of the tomato, and the zing of the red onion, but they blend together to just burst in your mouth in that perfect Harry Met Sally moment of the perfect bite. And the avocado, grapefruit, and papaya salad was interesting as well. I am not a fan of grapefruit, but again, the avocado and papaya sort of reduced the tartness of that grapefruit, and I was surprised to enjoy that salad. So if you are going to Boma, even if you're just getting a mouthful of a different soup and salad, you really need to try them all because you may be surprised at the ingredients that you like that you normally wouldn't like those ingredients separately. After all the soups and salads, I really had little room for the entrees, but I had to try the baborti and the pop and chakalaka just for the name itself. I will admit I went back and got a second sample of the baborti. It was so good. Have you eaten at Boma? What are your preferences? Would you eat there again? Please tell us in the comments below. I hope we gave you food for thought, pun intended, on visiting Boma on your next visit. If you like this video, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to be alerted whenever our new videos drop. Finally, if you're not a member of our incredible adult only Facebook group, please join us today where we will continue this conversation as well as many, many more. And remember, never grow up.